For more than 40 years, I've had the privilege to practice and teach photograph conservation. I've been engaged in the examination, documentation, conservation treatment, scientific analysis, and care of individual images and collections of photographs, housed in museums, libraries, archives, historic sites, and private homes around the world. I've been surrounded by powerful images that celebrate and document humanity. Many are comprised of finely divided metallic silver particles that scatter and absorb light to produce the darks and midtones that you may associate with 20th, 20th century photography. These images may be toned with gold to improve their permanence or hand colored with pigments or dyes to make them appear more lifelike. They may be suspended in egg white, gelatin or collodion, a form of cellulose nitrate and coated on a range of supports from paper, glass, metal, or film. And it's this variety that makes photography so exciting. Our photographs enrich our heart and soul, and I have no doubt that every one of you have photographic images of your family and friends that you cherish and hold dear. But unfortunately, they're deteriorating. They're cracking and corroding, um, fading and staining. And as a photograph conservator, I feel responsible for their preservation. For 20 years, I've had the honor to lead the Department of Art Conservation at the University of Delaware and to work with exceptional faculty, staff, students, and alumni who are deeply committed to the preservation of our cultural heritage. Connecting the arts, the sciences, and the humanities, our students, both undergraduate and graduate, have advanced our understanding of art and artifacts and their preservation. Working with our faculty, they develop new and innovative approaches to the conservation treatment and care of a variety of cultural heritage materials, from Native American featherwork and quill work to metals, glass, ceramics, paintings, photographs, works of art on paper, lacquerware, furniture, textiles, library and archival materials, and even natural history collections, including the University of Delaware's taxidermied Blue Hen. To give you an example of the skill and knowledge of our students, I'll just quickly show you three examples. This is archaeological glass from present-day Iraq before conservation treatment, and here it is after conservation treatment. The preservation of an 18th century clock face before and after conservation treatment. And finally, the preservation of an American folk art painting from 1820 to 1850 before, during, and after conservation treatment. Our alumni are leading conservation efforts around the world. They've been responsible for the preservation and care of the Declaration of Independence, the Emancipation Proclamation, the Dead Sea Scrolls, works of art by old and contemporary masters from Vermeer to Van Gogh. They've been responsible for the stabilization of the Star Spangled Banner, the decorative interiors of the Forbidden City, archaeological artifacts from Iraq and Turkey, the Ruby Slippers, Babe Ruth's baseball contract, Elvis Presley's gold records, and even C-3PO at the Smithsonian. As an alum and conservator, my focus is on 19th and 20th century photography, and the preservation of these materials is essential. These photographic materials, though fragile and prone to deterioration, are valued around the world. They celebrate greatness. They inspire discourse. They enhance scholarship and advance our knowledge, such as the construction of the Aswan Dam in Egypt that you see here. They connect cultures in powerful ways. They promote identity, and they engage public audiences. Indeed, from Mali to Iran to Cleveland, Ohio, and this is one of the early photographs of my family before the birth of my brother and sister, my parents, myself, and our dog, Dixie. These photographs are treasured around the world. To be involved in the preservation of photographic materials, you need to understand what these materials are and how they deteriorate over time. What are the issues of permanence? Some of the earliest photographic materials that you're likely to find include the daguerreotype on silver-plated copper. It's one of a kind, there is no negative. 
as is true with the amber type on glass. These images are often hand-colored. And the tin type on iron coated with a black lacquer are Japanning. As these materials deteriorate, they tend to corrode and rust, as you see here. But those of you who have family photographs are more likely to have photographic prints. And if you're fortunate to have any images from the 19th century, they're likely to be the albumin process or the albumin photograph. In this image, the final image is silver, embedded in a transparent egg white or albumin binder layer, coated on a thin paper support and typically mounted. These images in good condition appear purplish black or brown in color, and the paper fibers are readily visible. But as they deteriorate, they begin to fade and yellow, and the egg white becomes cracked and crazed. By the 1880s and 1890s, you begin to see black and white silver gelatin photographs in your collection. These images are also comprised of silver metal, but in this case, the silver is embedded in a transparent gelatin binder layer, coated on a paper or plastic coated paper support. They're black and white in color. They're often hand colored. But like the albumin print, when they're exposed to poor environmental conditions, they deteriorate and they become to fade, as you see here. By the 1960s, color photography dominated the market. And these images are comprised of organic dyes, cyan, magenta, and yellow. These dyes are dispersed in a gelatin binder layer on a paper support, and they deteriorate in the dark and in the light. And therefore, the only way to ensure the long-term preservation of these materials is storage in low temperature conditions. From the daguerreotype to the digital print, photographs are threatened. Their deterioration may be caused by exposure to poor environmental conditions, to inadequate storage and exhibition practices, or to limited resources. Working with our students, with colleagues at the University of Delaware, and in partnership with professionals around the world, I've had the honor to lead and assist with a variety of initiatives and activities centered on the preservation of our photographic heritage for the enrichment, enjoyment, and education of others. For more than a decade, we've worked or helped to preserve the rich photographic heritage found in libraries and archives in historically black colleges and universities. These images document campus life and the life of our nation. Last January, our graduate students helped to preserve a fantastic collection of African-American photographic portraits owned by the University of Delaware. These images range from the tintype to the albumin print to the silver gelatin photograph, and many were faded, yellowed, stained, or mold damaged. Working together, we documented their condition and created digital maps, as you see here, to prepare for their preservation. And then we cleaned their surfaces to minimize dirt and grime and staining, and here's an albumin print before and after conservation treatment. Our students have worked on boxes and boxes of 19th century mounted photographs, albumin, collodion, and gelatin, owned by the Explorers Club in New York City. These images document the golden age of Arctic exploration. I've been privileged to lead workshops and seminars and to assist with them as well in places all over the world, always focused on the preservation of our photographic heritage. From Croatia to Russia, across the Americas, and in Cuba next week, in Sub-Saharan Africa, and across the Middle East. For nearly a decade, the University of Delaware has worked in collaboration with the Arab Image Foundation in Beirut, Lebanon, as well as the Getty Conservation Institute and the Metropolitan Museum of Art on a project designed to preserve the photographic heritage of this region. From Bogota to Benin to Beirut, photographic materials are threatened. They're th threatened by armed conflict, and they're threatened by exposure to natural disasters. Our students have helped to recover photographs from floods, hurricanes, and tornadoes. We've helped to recover a large collection of photographs salvaged following the 2015 catastrophic floods in Wimberley, Texas. Many of these images were gathered along the riverbank. They were covered with silt and dirt, mud and debris, leaves and grass. They were abraded, and many had significant image loss. But working together, we preserved their surfaces so they could be returned 
to their owners. And here's another example of a black and white photograph before and after conservation treatment. This is the reward and challenge of photograph conservation. In January 2015, I worked on the most meaningful project of my professional career. With our graduate and undergraduate students, we helped to recover 280 fire damage photographs. These images were recovered from a catastrophic fire that occurred on December 26, 2014, in a private home outside of Columbus, Ohio, where three beautiful young boys and their grandmother tragically lost their lives. Many of their family photographs, housed in plastic containers, survived. They were covered with soot and fire retardant. They were water damaged and blocked together. They were burned at their edges and they were badly stained and distorted. But working together, one by one, day and night, and often in tears, we helped recover these images for the family. We used cotton swabs immersed in water and alcohol. We used erasers and brushes and cosmetic sponges. And here's an example of one of the photographs before and after conservation treatment. And another example of the boy's father before, after, and following digitization. This project was truly transformative. It allowed us to share our knowledge and skills with a family in, that had suffered an unimaginable loss. Our goal was to stabilize these materials and return them to the family. I feel forever connected to these photographs and to all the projects that I've been so privileged to be involved in, but not only to those photographs, but to the owners and the caretakers responsible for their preservation. For in the end, I believe that the preservation of our photographic heritage is as much about those images as it is about the individuals who own them. And for that reason, I urge all of you to invest your time and resources and attention into the preservation of your family photographs and your treasures for the enrichment, for the education, and for the enjoyment of others for they may be comprised of finely divided metallic silver particles toned with gold and hand-colored with pigments or dyes, embedded in egg white, gelatin, or collodion, coated on paper, glass, metal, or film. They may be housed in scrapbooks and albums, they may be hung on the wall, and they may be mount mounted onto cards that are brittle and deteriorate when you handle them. In the end, you have the power to preserve these collections. Store them in acid-free paper envelopes or folders, or house them in good quality plastic sleeves, such as polyethylene or polyester, to protect them from handling. Place them in acid-free boxes, and please do not use pressure-sensitive tape. And don't put them in the attic or the basement because the deterioration is caused by exposure to high temperature and high relative humidity condition. But store them in boxes in an interior closet will they be protected and buffered from changes in temperature and relative humidity? And finally, protect them from light. Frame them not directly against glass, but protect them with a window mat of some kind and display them on an interior wall. Please know that students, faculty, and alumni from the University of Delaware are willing and able to provide you with the advice that you might need. Or you can seek referrals from the American Institute for Conservation in the United States or the International Institute for Conservation around the world. But I promise you that conservators are ready to help and to assist in the preservation of your family treasures to ensure your legacy for future generations. Here's one of my favorite family photographs. It's my husband, Bob, and my daughter, Sarah and Maggie. We all graduated from the University of Delaware. It's in color, cyan, magenta, and yellow dyes, and I feel responsible for its preservation. So in the end, together, we have the power. You have the power, I have the power to preserve your memories, to preserve our memories, here, there, 
and everywhere. Thank you so much.